Okay, so we are going to be doing our value scale using only black and white. So you're gonna need some basic things, your white tempera, your black tempera, a palette, a brush, a cup of water, and something to dry off your brush. Okay, so tempera um, is what we're using right now. It's uh, pretty similar to what is called acrylic paint. Um, it's gonna be an opaque paint. Uh, the main thing that you need to remember with this is you do not want to mix it with water. It's not watercolor, okay? So anytime that we, um, you know, rinse off our brush to change colors, um, we always wanna make sure that we're drying our brush off completely and we don't want water in the palette. So um, if we are using the, the Frisbees, the plastic palettes in class, um, just be aware that somebody in the period before you probably used it and probably washed it. So when you grab your palette, you need to make sure that it's nice and dry just like this, if no water in there. And if there is, obviously just, you know, take a little towel or something and clean that off. Okay, so the big thing with this is we're obviously not doing an entire painting here. We're just doing a little painting exercise. So I don't need a lot of paint. And even if I was doing a painting, I, you know, wouldn't start off with a ton, okay? So just like a little nickel sized amount is gonna be plenty. And the other thing that I really want to impart to you right now is that black is obviously the darkest of the colors. So you do not need a lot of black. Black will completely overpower any color. So anytime we're using black, we're always making sure we're only using a tiny little amount. Okay, so we have our value scale here and this first box is going to be white. So that's pretty simple. We're gonna take some of our white tempura here, put it on our brush, not a ton, but enough. And then we're going to paint our box. So as you notice while I'm painting here, I'm not just kind of going crazy. I'm gonna be very deliberate about how I'm using the brush. So notice I'm using the side of the brush right now to create a sharp um, line on the inside of this box. I'm kind of painting inside the lines. And if the paint is real thick in one area, I'm kind of spreading it out putting more paint on my brush if I need it. Okay, so same thing on this side. I'm gonna use the side of my brush. And if um, you can't really see it as well with the white, but basically with paint brushes, if I just drag it across the paper, it's gonna give me a line the width of the brush. But if I press down when I'm painting, my line becomes wider. So let me paint this box real quick. Okay. Just try your best to stay inside of the lines. We want nice, neat, and deliberate marks here. We wanna to learn to control the paintbrush. And if you you know, can't bend your wrist that way, you know, move your paper so that you are able to manipulate that paintbrush in a way that makes the end product look good, but is also comfortable. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing here is going completely from white to black. We want a smooth gradation white, light gray, dark gray, and onto black. So we need to start mixing our paint. So I have my paint here, and you notice too that I did not like put, when I was pouring it from the bottle, I didn't put it in the puddle of paint. I made two separate and distinct areas here, okay? Same thing is gonna be true when I go to mix my paint. I'm not just gonna drag black and put it in this puddle because then this puddle's kind of ruined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna put it in a new area right here and then watch, I'm just going to barely, barely, barely dip my paintbrush in the tiniest amount of black and I'm gonna mix it over here. From previous experience, I can probably tell you this is already gonna be darker than I want. So I'm gonna mix it up nice and homogenous, okay? And I just want a tiny step down from white. So I'm actually gonna go back and put some more white in there because I, I feel like it's, right now it's too dark. So let me scoop some more, add that in, because I just want a, a very, very, very subtle transition from box to box. And this is just a trial and error process. So, you know, if you can't get the value that you're looking for, you know, put some more paint in there and, and mix that up and kind of see where you're at. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna move on to box two, okay, with my really, really, really light gray. Again, being deliberate about the, the strokes with my paintbrush. And you may notice that you can still see the words and the numbers through the paint. Um, yes, not like the highest quality <laughs> temper, so it's a little thinner, but that's okay because we're just we're just practicing right now. Okay, so nice and even. And as I'm doing this, I would say I wouldn't even mind if this 
number two box was a tiny bit lighter, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be that like your number two box looks exactly like your neighbor's number two box. But when I look at your value scale, I should see a gradation that's not jumping too far. Okay, so again, I have my gray that I made here and we're just gonna continue to add the tiniest amount of black. Again, just dipping the tiniest amount on your paintbrush and kind of seeing what that looks like. And I may have to test it. I may be looking at my palette and I may say, well, you know, I can't really tell if that's good for box three, but I can I can put some in box three and kind of gauge from there. And you know what? I think this works, so I'm gonna go with it. And just be aware that paint will dry a little darker than when it's on the paper. But again, you're just comparing each box to each other. And again, nice and smooth, blended values. You don't want unmixed paint for this particular exercise. Okay, that's good. So we're just gonna continue. Tiny, tiny, tiny amount of black into my same mixture. Okay, maybe a tiny bit more. That's probably good. Test in box four. So we're just gonna notice I haven't rinsed my brush at all because I haven't changed colors. I haven't needed to alter what's happening on my brush. I'm just adding more value to what I already have. So I haven't needed to rinse yet. Now as I'm looking at this, I'm not super happy with how similar three and four look. So I'm going to add some more black to what I have and paint on top of that. And I don't necessarily need to let it dry. Hopefully this will give, we'll be able to see a little bit of difference here. And I mean, even if you, you know, you come back, you're all the way down here and you look at your box three and you're like, oh no, it's too close to box two. You can always paint over it, right? That's what's great about this kind of paint is you can kind of correct mistakes like that. Okay, so now we're moving on to box five. Again, just little tiny amounts of black. Okay, nice and mixed up. Box five. Do you see how it's kind of scratchy right there at the top of the box? That means my I need more paint, okay? So if that's happening to you, you wanna make sure that you're loading your brush up with paint so that you can get nice even coverage. It shouldn't look scratchy or splotchy at all. Okay, let me show you a common mistake that happens a lot. People go, oh no, and they scoop too much black and then they've got this uh, pile over here that is absolutely nothing what they wanted it to be. Here's my advice. Forget this pile of paint, okay? It's not that much paint, it's not being wasteful. If I, if I have gone like, let me rephrase that. If it's just slightly off from what I'm looking for, I can probably alter it. But if I'm like, oh my gosh, that is way different than anything that I was trying to make with paint, it's just best to start over. Because what I see a lot of students do is like they'll end up with this giant glob of paint, you know, that they're just trying to paint one single box with because they just kept like adding in more white and adding more white. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's not changing, but I keep adding paint. What do I do? Just start over at that point, you know, like scrap it and move on. So we're going to do that just like my advice. So I put a new little spot of white over here and I'm going to add some black. And then I'm going to move on to box six. And notice that it says 50-50 visually because as we've discussed, um, the black paint will overpower. So it's not like I have an e equal amount of black and white paint. It's that it looks visually, visually 50% in between white and black. So again, just the trial and error process here. Notice I only add a little bit of black at a time. I'm not getting carried away because again, I don't want to have to start over. Um, and then just kind of gauging where we're at here. So let me see. Yeah, that's slightly darker than my box five. So I think that's going to be good. And then we're just going to continue this process. And I'm not doing the neatest painting job because I feel like I'm a little um, strapped for time because I'm 
videoing this. Um, and as I'm looking at this, I mean, you may be in this. Do you see that big jump from this one to this one? I'm kind of not feeling that. I kind of feel like that's too dramatic based on my other boxes here. So I'm actually going to go over that and line that up just the tiniest amount and then kind of see where we're at. That's still too dramatic of a jump for me. So again, it's trial and error, okay? Just mix until you get it right. Okay, I feel like that is going to be better. Mm, and it's kind of hard to tell too in this lighting. It's still too dark. I still am not pleased with it. And that can happen sometimes. Try not to get frustrated. Um, and you know, you might just be like, let me just let that dry and then come back to it later because I'm having trouble getting what I need. And that's okay too. You don't necessarily have to go in order. It's just easier to do that. Okay. I think I'm, okay, that's better. <laughs> Let me not say I'm happy with it and then change my mind again. Okay, so again, more black. And again, we just want this very subtle transition from one to the next. I need more black. And honestly, I feel like, do you see how I put too much on my brush and I wiped it over here because I didn't want to mix it in here? That's always good too. Um. Sometimes I feel like this is trickier than making a color scale because that black is so dramatic um, that it's hard to get kind of exactly what you're wanting. Um, whereas if I'm mixing like white and red, like there's not so much contrast there, so it's a little bit easier. But I really want you to see this shift in value, which I feel like is easier to see with just black starting off. Okay. Okay, so now we're on box eight here. And move that out of the light. Again, we're just continuing to add a little bit of black. And then testing, constantly gauging what we're doing, not just being like, looks good. Um, as I put it down on the paper, making those decisions, um, deciding if there is enough change in value. Okay. That's and sometimes you kind of have to like let it dry for like a minute too before you can really make that final decision on if that's gonna work. I feel okay about that. Okay, more black. Notice I'm mixing it up really good. The test could be a little darker. So mix that up. Okay, more black for box 10. And this should be a pretty dark charcoal gray because our box 11 is going to be black. Okay. And again, as long as I can see the transition, each box looks different. No box has a giant jump from one value to the other, then you are doing exactly what you need to do. Okay. All right, now I am about to do box black, but guess what? Because I'm making gray, there's white on my brush, so I need to clean it. So again, when I am going to rinse my brush, I just put it in here and I let it kind of gently drag along the bottom of the cup. I'm not smashing it really hard. Um, it's just a gentle kind of dragging along the bottom. So when it's on the bottom of the cup, I'm just kind of letting it move the bristles a little bit so that it loosens them up to get that paint out. Now, as you can probably see as I was doing that, there's a little bit of paint residue on my brush. If I were changing to white right now, I would be concerned about this because there is a little bit of black in the brush and I would go back and wash it better. But because I'm just moving on to black, it's not, it's not gonna be as big of a deal, okay? 
because again, just the teeniest bit of black residue in your brush um, would affect whatever color you put it into. Okay. Okay, so we have finished our value scale in black and white. There is a smooth transition from white going all the way down to gray. Now you may see some little bit of streakiness in here right now. That's just where the paint was a little bit thicker um, in some areas that will dry. It's just obviously the part's taking a little longer to dry. So just take one last look over your value scale. Make sure that you can see a nice smooth transition um, from one to the other. And as I'm telling you that, I feel like this box looks a little darker than this one. So I may want to go back and make adjustments. So just kind of, you know, constantly be looking at your value scale and then just make adjustments as necessary as you're working on it or going back at the end and uh, addressing that. Um, here is one that I did earlier, which I feel like is a better final product, um, but the video got messed up. So at least you can still see my final product here going from one to the other. And again, it's kind of the same thing. Like these two value scales do not look exactly the same, right? This box here is darker than this one, but both of them still have that change from dark to light. And you can see that from box to box. So as long as you're doing that, you'll be just fine.